today's topic is cardiac muscle in last video we have seen skeletal muscle structure and excitation contraction coupling the same we'll see about cardiac muscle today cardiac muscle which we know that it's branched muscle having one nucleus it can vary from one to three nucleus and two cells are united together with intercalated discs intercalated disc if we zoom then there are number of gap junctions which are responsible for fast conduction of action potential in cardiac muscle right now if we see excitation contraction coupling in cardiac muscle this is bit different from skeletal muscle where action potential comes from neuromuscular junction and it excite a muscle via dynamics we have seen in last video so how basically mechanical coupling occur between dhpr and rhinodine receptor this is bit different in cardiac muscle where action potential is generated in same tissue via sa node so this is action potential of sa node which is generated by sa node sa node only and that action potential is transmitted to myocyte this is action potential of myocyte so cardiac muscle right now that action potential is responsible for contraction of that muscle okay so today we have to see in this video that how basically one action potential generated from sa node transmit to the action potential and how basically this action potential converted into contraction right okay so for that we should know what is basically structure specularity uh, of cardiac muscle which are how they differ from skeletal muscle that is also important right so till now we know what is structure of skeletal muscle so they are t tubule which are nothing but invaginations of sarcolemma right and there are very well organized sarcotubular system which is the triad system as you can see this sarco this is one sarcotubular system and this is on the opposite side second tub sarcotubular system and t tubule in between so this is called triad fine but if we talk about cardiac muscle as you can see clearly it's not well organized fine there are cisternae like structure the sarcotubular is very sparsely organized and if we, if you see t tubule which is very thin in skeletal muscle this is very wide in cardiac muscle now we know that cardiac muscle have to work for all over life so something should be very special in cardiac muscle right but here this is not well organized so what is basically role of this sparsely organized sarcotubular system in this video we'll see this thing okay so if we talk about sarcotubular system we have seen that in skeletal muscle there is triad arrangement fine in cardiac muscle this is dyed arrangement not triad arrangement what it mean is the sarcotubular system is facing only from one side as it is very irregularly arranged that only some portion of sarcotubular system are facing the t tubule right but if you talk about work of cardiac tissue that cardiac tissue have to work for all over life continuously then why why this arrangement is even lesser right even less number of rhinodine receptor and less number of uh, dhpr are facing with each other why so let's see okay so if we talk about both the channels we have seen in cardiac muscle that mechanical coupling occur between both the channel dhpr dihydropyridine receptor which is present on t tubule and rhinodine receptor which is present on sarcoplasmic reticulum so how these two channel mechanically interact with each other and calcium release from sarcoplasmic reticulum that's the idea right if we see arrangement here this this thing so black one are dhpr on t tubule and these are rhinodine receptor so if you see arrangement they are arranged in 1 is to 2 ratio fine but when we talk about cardiac muscle as you can see the black dot is dhpr and the white empty circle is rhinodine receptor so rhinodine receptor are much larger in number and the ratio is 1 is to 4 to 10 rhinodine receptor so for 1 dhpr there are there 
are rhinodin receptor from 4 to 10 in number. Even less. Then what is role here? Okay. So to know this, what basically why, why in cardiac tissue the arrangement is like this. To know this, let's see the diode. So this diode, this cardiac diode have a functional unit called couplons. So these couplons are functional unit of diode in which the cluster of uh, L-type calcium channel which are DHPR which are facing or opposed opposing uh, the dynodine receptor channels but we know that DHPR are very less in number. Now what is this couplon is each uh, couplon have around 10 to 25 L-type calcium channel and 100 to 200 rhinodine receptor clustered together. Okay. This intercouplon distance is around 300 to 400 nanometer. Now what is role of couplon in this? Basically signaling of calcium via this, these calcium channel which are DHPR channel. So calcium come and how that calcium interact with more number of rhinodine receptor it's via local modulation occur what is it mo local modulation is as you can see green colored are rhinodine receptor and red dot are dhpr channel so how every rhinodine receptor can come in contact with this red color dhpr channel is via rotating 90 degree so they basically keep on rotating such that the every rhinodine receptor can come in contact with the DHPR channel and it can get the calcium from DHPR. Okay, we'll see how the calcium come and how basically contraction come but just you should be clear here that how basically what is couplon and what is role of couplon here and that's why this is the couplon arrangement and gap junction which are responsible for cardiac syncytium property. Cardiac contraction occur simultaneously the cardiac action potential spreads throughout the tissue and whole heart, whole atrium, whole ventricle contract uh, simultaneously that is called syncytium, right? So that syncytium property of cardiac muscle is because of this couplon arrangement, fine? Okay. Now, let's see how basically calcium comes and how calcium is released from sarcoplasmic reticulum, fine? Okay. So first of all, we know that first step is always action potential arrival. We know that action potential will come to T-tubule the same as we have seen in cardiac muscle. Now what is difference here is basically this, this DHPR is voltage sensitive channel. So here mechanical coupling doesn't occur between these two channels. In fact, this channel opening occur. So this depolarization as it's voltage gated, so it open up with depolarization. Okay, so depolarization arrival lead to opening of L-type calcium channel. Now calcium comes here. This is called synaptic clef. And this, this clef. Okay, so this clef, calcium increases here. Okay, okay. So calcium increases in local clef. Now what this calcium does is, it acts on rhinodine receptors, which have receptor for calcium. And the rhinodine receptor open up. As you can see, one channel opened up, okay, and as this channel open up, this channel open up, calcium from sin this SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum, calcium come outside, calcium efflux occur, fine. As calcium come outside, it act on other rhinodine receptor, okay, and further opening of other rhinodine receptor occur, and hence the calcium concentration in local cleft increases. Fine. As the calcium concentration in local cleft increases, it have a ne negative feedback mechanism. So this was positive feedback. Like one calcium is, one rhinodine receptor is basically responsible for opening of other rhinodine receptors, right? So this is positive feedback. But as the calcium increases here, there is negative feedback also, which is responsible for again closure of this L-type calcium channel. And again inactivation of rhinodine receptor so that's how it's self-controlling itself right okay so this is only kinetics between this these channels 
uh, we have talked about skeletal muscle where both uh, both channel interact and mechanical coupling occur which was responsible for calcium efflux right and that calcium uh, take part in uh, contraction fine but here the thing is different basically outside calcium is responsible also responsible for contraction and from rhinodrome receptor also okay now let's see how basically excitation contraction coupling occur just brief about so arrival of action potential obviously that will be first step coming to calcium entry to myocyte as we have seen in last slide okay calcium increases in cytoplasm and that calcium obviously that is responsible from for efflux of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum so overall calcium increases in cytoplasm right so that calcium is responsible for contraction cycle we have seen excitation and then that calcium is responsible for contraction contraction will be same as we have seen in uh, skeletal muscle how basically actin myosin bridging occur the cross bridge cycle so that is same right yeah but calcium the force of contraction is directly proportional to calcium more the concentration of calcium more will be cardiac contraction fine but as the calcium increases in cytoplasm right the contraction will be strong but how next cycle occur so the calcium concentration should be less for other cycle right so how it occur it basically first thing we have seen that increase in calcium concentration here it will inhibit l type calcium channel okay first thing second thing is this calcium is taken again to sr how basically the calcium interact with colmodulin and that calcium colmodulin complex it open up uh, calcium uh, atps here it's basically a sarcolamin protein which which keep on inhibiting it which is inhibited by this calcium colmodulin complex so basically the calcium atp is open up here and that calcium is taken into the sr fine so the calcium concentration decrease via this method also other met method which decrease calcium concentration from cytoplasm is calcium extrusion via membrane there are some exchanger for calcium sodium calcium exchanger right which are responsible for calcium efflux outside so that's how the calcium concentration is managed again for next cycle right okay so this we have seen how excitation contraction coupling occur in muscle so let's summarize that uh, action potential arrival open up the channels okay calcium come also via l type calcium channel and this stimulate rhinodrome receptor and responsible for calcium efflux now that calcium goes to myofilaments and responsible for contraction that same calcium taken into sr and uh, thrown outside also and taken into mitochondria also so that next cycle can be started again okay so basically this is action potential leads to increase in calcium concentration leads to muscle contraction fine so that's all about excitation contraction coupling in cardiac muscle so please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos press bell icon to get notification and please 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 comment below if you have any type of query okay so thank you so much